Yes, the Bible tells her that to honor your husband and to show honor to the man of God. But what about the woman of God? Does the woman of God don't need honor? Let me tell you something tonight. Don't mock any servant because you will reap a grievous harvest. Here I come across a negative action of little children and out of ignorance, they start jeering Elijah for Elisha for no reason. Some of you jeer people and mock them when they are going through their Gethsemane for no reason because you do not know the word of God and you are not following the word of God. I wasn't, I wasn't coming here, but the Lord sent me here tonight. What I am trying to say, those 42 children lost their life in a tragic incident. That was the result of ridiculing or insulting God anointing prophets. Unfortunately, they knew nothing of the consequence of touching the Lord anointed. God has established the scripture in God has not established the scripture in vain. When God warns against touches his anointed, he means exactly what he has declared. When God talks about his chosen people, and you go on someone's timeline, and they're telling you all these lies, excuse me, and they're telling you all these lies, and they're telling you all these chakras. And they're telling you what to do. How to do it. At this time you do this. At this time you do that. I think my mother is somewhere. At this time you do this. At this time you do that. And you continue to do these things. And there is no fruit. And you wonder why your life is like this. You wonder why your life is like that. Because the Lord might tell you. Go and sow a seed to the man of God. Go and sow a seed to the woman of God. This is how you're going to get your breakthrough. But here comes someone. That is not telling you nothing. More than prophesying cars, prophesying a house, not praying for your disease to go away, not praying for you to get your, your benefits, whatever benefit you need to get, not praying for you to have a settlement, but they are prophesying lie to you. They are teaching you lies and you sit and you listen and you hear it and you pay them. Numbers 23, 19 tell me, God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Had he say it shall not do it, or as he spoken and it shall not make good? The problem with these offenders that offending the children of God the offender that they were young and unexpected. They took the anointing of God upon the prophet for granted. Like you will take my anointed for granted. You will take the woman of God anointed for granted. You take people oil for granted and think it is going to be well. No, it's not going to be well. You know when the demon behind the scene, you have to flush, keep flushing yourself. You have to keep flushing yourself with lemon. Amen? This is not margarita. <laughs> this is lemon. And a serious note.
I know I normally don't do this. But I know that I'm treading on someone since from today I've been I've been provoking somebody. From today I've been provoking over 500 people. And my mother told me last night that I need not to say that. I need I must behave myself and be quiet. So I'm going to try to stay focused. In the mighty name of Jesus. Did anyone cheer from, for me? Alright, this is what is going on. God. The anointing of God upon the prophet for, for granted. I cannot take it for granted. Of, of all servant of God. Prophets are the most dangerous one to offend or toy with. I'm talking about a true prophet. I'm not talking about you get a word of knowledge. I'm talking about that you can see between the wall. I'm talking about, thank you woman of God. I'm talking when you can see between the wall. I'm talking about when you can stay in your house. And you travel to Dubai. You travel to Austria. You go into Africa and break up their shrine. That's what I'm talking about. Because a lot of us are going through a lot. Because we are, we have decided to blend ourselves. But that is another topic by itself. Let her, let her briefly consider the gap. Between the little children and the prophet. There was nothing to be compared between these two classes of people. Because in age experience and anointing of the prophet of God. What does these little children know about provoking God anointed servant? What does these children know about that? About provoking God's anointing servant? What do they know about the prophet of God? When you are ignorant, you mess with the messenger of the Lord. And little that you did not know that by mocking the prophet of God, they are right in fact mocking God himself. Do you know when you mess with a man or a woman of God, a true vessel of God, you are messing with your own self? And there is so much things that I could come on here and share tonight. Yes, it does. There is so much things that I could come and share on here tonight. But I am taking my time. And as, as I go, I shear. God will do anything and everything to defend his true prophet. He has made it very clear that whoever touches his prophet is troubling the apple of his eyes. That's what the Lord says. Don did not say that. No, I want you to be very careful. When you mock or deride a prophet, you are insulting the anointing. And by doing so, you are touching the apple of God's eye. Then this becomes an instrument of divine judgment to the offender. When people offended God's servant, the true believer, when you offend God's servant and, their, and the, their offenses may be hidden, but when God decided to deal with the hafiz, he make it open. When that God decided to deal with the hafiz, he is going to make it publicly shown and known. I am here to tell someone.
touch not the Lord anointed. And when you are teaching the children of God, teach them very well. Because when people offend God's servant, it is not easy. He will make it open. When those 42 children were mocking God's servant, they were, not, they were not seen by everyone in the community. But by the time the judgment has descended violently upon them, the tragedy become a talk of the town. Do you want your life to be the talk of the social media? Or do you want to behave yourself diligently and well? I don't know why this key thing keep cutting off and off. But I bless the name of Jesus. And Lord, I pray that it will come back on in the mighty name of Jesus. Let it come on, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. So what I am going to do right now, and then I'm going to pray, and then I will go. In the name of Jesus. I am going to go again into 2 Peter, chapter 2. And I am going to read 2 Peter, chapter 2. And anyone that can write it for me, write it. If you cannot write it, it's okay. I'm going to read 2 Peter chapter 2 again. But there were also false prophets among the people, even, or even as there will be false teachers among you, who will secretly bring in destructive heresy, even denying the, the, the Lord who brought them and bring unto themselves swift destruction. And many will follow their destructive ways because of whom the way of truth will be blasphemed. By covetousness, they will exploit you with deceptive words. For a long time their judgment has not been idle, and their destruction does not slumber. I am reading Second Peter chapter 2. For if God did not spare the angel who sinned, but cast them down to hell, and delivered them into chains of darkness, to be reserved for the judgment and did not spare the ancient world but save Noah one of eight people a preacher of righteousness bringing in the flood on the world and on the ungodly and turned the city of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes condemning them to destruction, making them an example of those who afterward would live ungodly and delivered righteous Lot. I did not know Lot was righteous until today. Deliver righteous Lot who was oppressed by the filthy conduct of the wicked for the righteous man dwelling among them the lord don't want you to dwell among unrighteous people tormenting is it, it tormented his righteous soul from day to day by seeing and hearing the lawless deeds then the Lord know how to deliver the godly out of temptation and to reserve the unjust under punishment for the day of judgment and especially those who walk according to the flesh in the loss of uncleansiness speak evil.
evil of the things they do not understand and will utterly punish in their own corruption and will receive the wages of unrighteousness as those who count it pleasure to carouse in the daytime, they are spot and blemishes, carousing in their own deception, while they feast with you, they are having their eyes full of adultery, and they, that cannot cease from sin, enticing and stable soul, they have a hard train in covetous practice and are accursed children. They are forsaken the right way and gone astray. Following the way of Balaam, the son of Beor, who loved the wage of unrighteousness, but he was rebuked for his iniquity, a dumb donkey speaking with a man, man's voice restrained the madness of the prophet. These are wells without water. He's telling you that the false prophets, there are wells without water. Clouds carried by tempests from whom it's reserved the blackness of darkness forever. The Lord is talking about deceptions of the false teacher. For when they speak great swelling words of emptiness, they allure through the lust of the flesh, lewdness, through lewdness, the one who have actually escaped from those who live in earth. While they promise them liberty, they themselves are slave of corruption, for by whom a person is overcome, by him and also is brought into bondage. For it's after they have escaped the pollution of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled in them and overcome. The latter hen is worse from them from the beginning, for it would have been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than having known it to turn from the only commandment delivered to them. But it has happened to them according to the true Proverbs. A dog returned to his own vomit, and a soul having washed for her, the, her wallowing in the mirror. What the Lord is trying to say tonight. The Lord is saying, I'm just going to pick up from here and then I'm going to pray. The Lord is saying, the cloud, Peter accused the heretical teacher of awakening false expectation. Like spring that contain no water, or storm cloud with a darkness but produce no rain. What he's saying, a learning is like enticing, mean. To catch with, with a bait. The bait is a great swelling word of emptiness. Emptiness. Is sounding promise that prove to have no real content. The hook is the loss of the flesh. Normal sexual desire that are practiced in the wrong way. I'm not going to go there tonight. But the Lord is saying, normal sexual desire that are practiced in the wrong way. So I'm here to tell anyone that are practicing normal sexual desire 
in the wrong way, you need to stop. In the mighty name of Jesus. The Lord is saying the false teacher, the heretical teacher clearly were implying that, one, that once, once the soul is saved, what is done in the body is not is of no importance. That's not true. Those who live in error, the girding of the flock from the wolf in the sheep. The wolf are now in sheep clothing. As Jesus described false teacher. And one of the primary concern of, of, the, of the apostle is the one of the chief ta tasks of a pastor. The irony of false teaching is that promise great false teaching promise you great freedom while it advocate are already slave to sin. The gospel offer release from the corruption of the world. But the false teacher, when you are teaching people falsely, you don't care. The false teacher involved in moral ruin by their immoral practice and their greedy motivation. Red Bottom is not going to take you to heaven. Louis Vuitton is not going to take you to heaven. Gucci is not going to take you to heaven. The only thing that can take you to heaven in a clean heart and do good to others as you would have them do to you. Yes, yeah, some I'm I'm tearing up something tonight, woman of God. And I'm feeling it, but I am soaking the blood of the Lamb. I'm soaking the blood of Jesus. I am soaked in the blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the Son of the Living God. This is what the Lord is saying tonight. They have escaped. The subject is the praise in the heretical teacher who, who are called slaves of corruption. They are twisting the word of God. The false teacher. I think I'm going to be on this for a while. The false teacher. Corrupting the word of God. And the Lord is saying not so. Let me tell you what Matthew 24 said and then I pray. Matthew 24, 3, 3, um, 3 to 5. Tell us, they said when this happened. And what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age. Jesus answered, watch out that no one deceive you. For many will come in my name. And at that time, many will turn away from the faith. Many people turning away from the faith. And many false prophets will appear and deceive many people. A spiritual adultery, I call it spiritual adultery. A spiritual adultery increase in the church. False prophet will flourish as highly sought after speaker and as Christian accept more of these false teaching. Indiscriminately, many will fall away, believe in a phony faith. Since we have been warned, it might be, they may be wise to seek insight into how to discern 
false prophecy. And as you ask, what are false prophets prophet likely to say? What are they likely? What are they likely to say? The Lord is saying, I should have do this first. A prophet who um, presumed to speak in my name anything, I have not commanded him to say. Or a prophet who speak in the name of other gods must be put to death. You may say to yourself, how oh, can we knew the message has not been spoken by the Lord? If what a prophet proclaim in the name of the Lord does not take place or come true, that is a message the Lord has not spoken. The prophet has spoken it presumptuously. They will tell us stuff presumptuously. I want you to know tonight that there are enemies around you. There are enemies around you. There are enemies around you. And false prophets and their followers reject the truth. I'm going to do another cleansing on my page. They reject the truth. They don't want the truth. They are very re rebellious and disobedient. They killed your prophet who had admonished them in order to turn them back to you. They commit awful blasphemies. They want to kill the true prophet. But I am here to tell somebody that I, me, are unkillable, my men. I don't care what kind of dog, diabolic you, you're messing over from the other side of the world, if you know what I mean. It cannot touch me or harm me. Because I am covered under the shadow of the Almighty God. The message of false prophecy are telling you peace, peace without any repentance. It said the house of Israel and the house of Judea have been utterly unfaithful to me, declare the Lord. They have lied about the Lord. They said he will do nothing. No harm will come to us. We will never see the sword of famine. The prophets are but wind, and the word is not in them. That's what Ezekiel says. They're not telling you that you're going to see a sword of famine. Are you not seeing what is happening right now? Are you not looking at what is happening right now? I am here to tell you that in Jeremiah 23, 16, verse 16, um, 23, 16 to 18. Write that down in your book and read what it said. This is what the Lord, Lord Almighty say. Do not listen to what the prophet are prophesying to you. They fill you with false hopes. They speak vision from their own mind and not from the mouth of the Lord. They keep saying to those who despise me, The Lord say you will have peace. And all you who follow the stubbornness of their heart, they said no harm will come to you. But which of them has stood in the counsel of the Lord to see or to hear his word? Who has listened and hear the word of God? I am here tonight to tell you to stay away from these false teachers. I'm going to come back tomorrow by the special grace of God. In the morning and in the afternoon. And I'm here to tell you to stay away from these false teachers. And I'm going to pray that 
you will be stabilized i will be stabilized in the mighty name of jesus and we pray for divine increase in the mighty name of jesus and if you are led to sow, go ahead and sow in the name of jesus hallelujah so i pray tonight in the name of jesus and i pray oh god that you cover your children tonight as they sit and hear the word of God, I do not take it lightly for granted, O God, in the name of Jesus. I ask you, O wind of God, drive away every power of ungodly right uprising against us tonight. In the mighty name of Jesus, let the rage of the wicked and false prophet that is against us, let they become render impotent, null and void in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, I ask you tonight, O oh God, that let the imagination of the wicked against me, against you, be neutralized in the mighty name of Jesus. I call that every counsel of the evil king that is against us and the evil priest, prophet, and apostle, may they be scattered tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh God, I ask you tonight to arise and speak great wrath against the enemy camp tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. Anyone, O oh Lord, that has received a bad prophetic word, may you null and void it tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. I come against every band of the wicked, Lord, that are arresting your children's progress. I command it to break tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. I ask you tonight, O oh God, that every false teaching, every false prophet be exposed in the mighty name of Jesus. I ask you, O oh God, that every cord of darkness that militating against my breakthrough and your children breakthrough, let it be broken tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh God, arise tonight and laugh at our enemies in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh God, arise tonight and speak and speak woe unto our enemies in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh God, I ask you tonight to vex our oppressor, every false teacher, Lord, that has teach us wrong doctrine, oh God. May you visit them tonight, in the night season, in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, I ask you tonight, O oh God, to touch your children afresh, in the mighty name of Jesus. Anoint them afresh, O oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. I ask you, O oh God, for divine protection for me and divine protection for the life of your children in the mighty name of Jesus. O oh Father divine of your will and your way, I cover this broadcast, O oh God, with the precious blood of Jesus and the fire of the Holy Ghost that there will be no backlash no retaliation in the mighty name of Jesus Lord I ask you tonight oh God to give your children sweet sleep I ask you tonight oh God to give them a divine visitation of your glory in the mighty name of Jesus Lord I ask you tonight oh God shake the hurt oh God against your evil prophets against the false prophets in the mighty name of Jesus. Savior divine 
have your will and your way in this midst tonight. In the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, I seal myself and I seal the listeners with the precious blood of Jesus and the fire of the Holy Ghost that there will be no backlash, no retaliation in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, I ask you to take all the glory, take all the honor, and cover us under the shadow of your almighty wing. And we as your children and your servant, we stand on Psalms 27 and Psalms 91. And we stand on Isaiah 53 in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, I give glory unto you. I give honor unto you. In Jesus' name I pray. May the word of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. In thee, O oh Lord, you are my strength and my redeemer. As I see you tomorrow, may the Lord God of Elijah, the God that answered by fire, answer you tonight. In the mighty name of Jesus, God bless you. God bless you. Have a good night. Thank you for coming. And do not take it lightly or for granted. I truly appreciate you. May the word of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. In thee, O oh Lord, you are my strength and you are my redeemer. Lord, I ask you to take all the glory, the honor, and the praise. In Jesus' name I pray.